Hey, Stacy David here with the Tales of a Gearhead podcast. Now, what is this? Well, it's a podcast that covers everything automotive, everything mechanical, everything that's just cool about the automotive lifestyle. And since that's just about everything, <laughs> you're going to love it. Let's get rolling. All right, well, we got a great surprise for you guys today. I got Andrew Collins here from The Drive. Now, if you guys are not familiar with The Drive, well, I'm going to let Andrew tell you a little bit about it. Andrew, welcome to the podcast. And uh, tell right. us tell us a little bit about The Drive. What is it? Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Stacey. Well, it's, it's basically a car news website. It's all things car culture, car reviews. So we do some product testing. It's uh, we call it the chronicle of car culture. So yeah. it's kind of like the book of record for what's going on in the car scene. We focus a little bit less on reviews. We do do car reviews, but yeah. we're a lot more about just kind of industry news and what's happening in the world of cars and what people are up to. What's what kind of shenanigans people are doing with modifications and yes. all that good stuff. And that's one of the main reasons that I wanted to have you on here, you know, because we're always talking about modified stuff. I'm a, right, right. Yeah, it's all about modifying things, but it's nice to know what's kind of coming down the pike as well. First of all, let's kind of get your background. Are you a driver? Are you a modifier? Are you a builder? You know, where do you oh, kind man. of classify yourself? <laughs> I would say all of the above. Okay, and you know, good. Stacey, I, just, I just had to, I got to briefly say it's, it's quite a thrill to talk to speak with you because I mean, I remember watching you on gears on speed channel uh, oh, back yeah. in the day <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I i mean i would absolutely say those those were some formative years and i mean i can remember a few segments vividly like you going through transmissions and uh it was so great to see that stuff before i ever had a chance to really get under the hood of a car it was it was so cool watching you bring out parts and and show stuff off so yeah i just wanted to say i appreciate you having me on for that reason <laughs> well thank you man that means a lot that's uh that's what the shows are all about they're to encourage yeah, people man. doing and here you know you're the next generation keeping it going so <laughs> that's awesome man yeah well at, at this point i'm like the medium generation i got some there's definitely some younger younger bucks below me but um, oh yeah that's <laughs> it's all good though it's how it all yeah. works okay so tell me what your first project was Yes, my first project ever was a 1991 Suzuki GSXR motorcycle, which I actually still own. Nice. Um, yeah. How did was, you pull uh, that off? I mean, I get rid of all my stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> my father and I actually got our motorcycle licenses together when I was 18. Okay. Uh, it was something he'd always wanted to do, and I was pretty stoked about it, of course. You know, I actually I had a Mazda RX-7 back then, a, a very slow one, and I kept get, you know, kept getting spanked by Mustangs and Camaros. And, oh, yeah. No, that's and, not, and not a thinking, good thing. Yeah, exactly. And then I kind of realized, wow, you know, for, for so much less money, you can get a motorcycle and they're so much faster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, so I ended up buying this bike at a salvage auction. It was in a million pieces. You know, this was YouTube was around, but it was not as comprehensive as it is today. So yeah. we got a combination of manuals and and video watching and got the thing back on the road. You know, it was fun to ride, but those those sport motorcycles are so aggressive that when, when you're just trying to cruise around in peace, they're not that comfortable, yeah. <laughs> especially old you, ones. You know, the thing is, too, for me, I, I like motorcycles, but I stay away from them because I know how I am. And <laughs> I never drive a motorcycle with any kind of sanity. <laughs> it's like I get on it and I lose all sense of control because of the throttle and the feel oh, and everything. Yeah. And so I just stay away from them. I just yeah. I, I put myself in so many dangerous situations riding them. There's such a, a thrill like that. <laughs> yeah, I stick it's with uh, car stuff. I think it makes sense. I feel like I got lucky with with some of my behavior. Back Most of us did. Yeah. Yeah. It's like there's so but, many uh, ways we should have died. <laughs> right. Exactly. And. Uh, you know, the thing is, it was it was basically worth such a small amount of money because it was, you know, it was a salvage title and an 18 year old had put it back together. So oh, it yeah, wasn't worth yeah. Jack. Yeah. But I love the way it looked. So I just kind of stuffed it in the corner of my grandma's garage. And uh, that's where it's been for, for years now. <laughs> OK, so then you moved on to cars. Yes, yes. I have dreams of putting it in my living room or something someday, but we'll see. We'll see about that. Oh, yeah. Um, are, are you married? Uh, yes, yes. OK, well, yes. That, that's going to be a problem right there. I'll yeah. tell you that right <laughs> Yeah, Andrew, what yeah. is this in the front room? Uh, well, that's yeah. my motorcycle. <laughs> goes right there alongside yeah. my my big toolbox. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's definitely why it's uh, why it's still in Grandma's garage under a tarp and not properly displayed yet. But maybe someday we'll see. But yeah, car stuff. So um, 
I almost I did have some cars before that bike, but I wouldn't classify them as projects because they yeah. just they didn't they didn't stick with me long enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a I had an Acura Integra briefly, you know, a classic sport compact car. Wrecked that very quickly, driving like an idiot. Uh, and then I had an RX-7 non-turbo, which was cool, but uh, pretty slow. Yeah. <laughs> And then um, I moved up to Vermont and I kind of got into off-road stuff and trucks. Nice. Um, I actually, yeah, I found a, uh, a Land Rover Discovery with a manual transmission, which was pretty rare. That is really rare. Yeah. And uh, ended up kind of getting into the like, you know, the off-roady like safari scene and mm -hmm. put some racks on it, a bunch of lights. And that was a lot of fun. But man, that thing cost me so much money to operate. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I mean between the, the fuel economy is one thing, and then I think that you know the straw that broke the camel's back for me on that one was I had to, I had a power steering leak and I had to buy this hose, and like you could only get the Land Rover one, and it was just this preposterous amount of money for this stupid little yes. rubber hose, and I was like, all right, you know what, that's it, I'm not like I'm selling this. I'm oh moving yeah. On. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, if you're getting into the off-roading world, I mean, you're always tearing stuff up, you're breaking exactly. things. I mean, the, yeah, the Land Rover is not a cheap thing to do. No. Yeah. A good friend of mine once told me, uh, there's two types of off-road trucks. They're either broken or they're about to break. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not wrong, right? It's like, yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you're beaten up on it, it uh, yeah, they definitely get beat up. And then uh, actually from there, I used some of the money selling it to uh, go down to Australia for a while. And uh, oh, those guys are really dog. into trucks. Very yeah, cool. yeah. So I actually worked as an off-road tour guide down under for about uh, around 2011 uh, for a while. Okay. And we would take, yeah, we would take people on, on uh, these tours, like either across the middle of the country or up into the jungle. And it was, it was absolutely incredible. We drove. Uh, that sounds I drove, awesome. Yeah, man. I drove a vehicle called an Isuzu NPR, which is, or NPS or something, which is basically a cargo truck with just huge tires and full yeah. of fuel and food. And because uh, the thing about Australia is it's about the same size as America, but like, or continental America, but 10% uh, of the population or something. So you just got so much space yes. in the middle. It's, uh, yeah, great for <laughs> well, Of course, cities. everything poisonous lives down there yes. too. So. Oh, big time. Yeah, big time. <laughs> so yeah, that was a lot of fun. You know, that, that's kind of the off-road bug kind of stuck with me. And um, I got back to the U.S. I had a forerunner for a while, which was great. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. it's a classic, classic four by four. Um Shoot, there's so many cars. I'm starting to get out of order, but uh, <laughs> oh no, that's fine. So you're in uh, Denver now, right? Yeah, actually, I actually live in uh, upstate New York mostly. I um, I'm living with some family right now in, okay. uh, in Denver, Colorado. Um, just because you know that I'm lucky enough that wife and I both work from home, so we're like, oh, you know what, we can we can mix it up a little bit. So yeah. we road tripped out here with the with the dog and. Um, yeah, just been enjoying the the high elevation and and some snow. A That's bit a nice area out fun. there. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, the four wheeling out there is a lot different too. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah we um, I didn't bring a four by four with me on this trip. Unfortunately, we just have uh, we have a three series station wagon for for road trip duties that we just got. But yeah, that's uh, just yeah, just gorgeous country up here for sure. Well, let me get you into um, let's ch change the subject here a little bit. Let's get into sure. some of the things that you see coming up on the horizon. Let's talk about okay. like EVs and mm. um, hybrids and hydrogen and alternative fuels and gasoline yeah. and diesel and all that kind okay. of stuff. Okay. So you're around now, most of the, the enthusiasts, obviously most of the, the builders, the modifiers and stuff like that, they're gasoline or diesel. Yeah. And that's not really going to change much. Uh, but in the new car market, what do you see happening with, um, maybe some of the electric vehicles coming out. Are there any changes? Are these going away? I know that a lot of people are jumping out of them, but I see some other things coming up like hydrogen. So give me your thoughts about that. Let's dig into this a little. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the alternative fuels world is an interesting one, especially in the last few years. I feel like between, you know, there's some government mandates and incentives happening that's pushing things one way or another. And uh, sure. And yeah, a lot of, of people jumped on those and got yes. the vehicles, and now they're jumping out of them. Yeah, you know, exactly. They well, to, it's uh, they're figuring yeah. out kind of what kind of vehicles they are. So, yeah, I think it's tough because uh, at, at the current stage of technology, they're still pretty expensive. I mean, even yeah. a lower end EV is not like a cheap car, a cheap way to get around. Yeah. And uh, and used EVs are a challenge because people have a hard time figuring out, like, well, you know, how much life is left in this thing. It's it, exactly. It, it's not. It's not like. Uh, 
yeah, you know, like an old Ford or whatever, where you can just go down to a mechanic and they can pretty much look it over for you. With an EV, it's like it's tougher to take the temperature of the battery and really yeah. get a sense for what you're buying. So that's a little dangerous. You know, the thing that I've noticed with that is that you know, mechanical things like a regular gasoline or diesel powered vehicle, you can rebuild them almost indefinitely. Right. Exactly. And nobody really yeah. rebuilds an electric vehicle. I mean, when's the last time you bought a used electric shaver? Yeah, you, exactly. You don't that, do that or a used blender. You, you, right. you know, when they do go out, you, you toss them and you buy a new one because they're, they're disposable. And I know. the mentality on the electric vehicle is very similar to that. I don't know how they're going to ever change that because you can't, I mean, just the replacement batteries are 15 to $20,000. I know. I, and that's, that's definitely, that's something that concerns me, honestly, not only with EVs, but with gas cars too. I mean, there's, yeah. So many new cars are so like have, are screen connected and operating yes. system based. And it's like, yeah, it's like you were just saying, I mean, would you buy a 10 year old cell phone? Like, no, of course not. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, it's tough to, yeah, it's tough to see how, you know, even brand new IC, ICE cars are going to be in, in 20 years down the road. Yeah. I know that uh, one of the trends that I've been seeing, and I want to get your opinion on this. I've, I've seen a lot of people that are starting to look for vehicles that are pre 2014. Mm, interesting. And especially in trucks. I mean, like, like these old trucks, especially these diesels, these Cummins, you know, these Dodges, these Duramax Chevys and, you know, the power stroke Fords and stuff, these things, they're not going down in price. Yeah. I mean, when when yeah. they come up for sale, they're gone <laughs> because <laughs> I they're, know they're new enough where they still have all, you know, most of the stuff you know, the cup holders and all the seat heaters and all that yep, stuff yep. that people want, but they're not so modern that they're losing all of the, you know, they're really susceptible to breaking down. What do you think about that? Man, I, I mean, I concur basically like, uh, you you kind of hit it on the head with that sweet spot of cars that are not mm -hmm. brand, brand new, but new enough that they've got the, they've got the good features. And, yeah. um, you know, more to that point is you know, we actually were just posting a story about this on on the drive. How <laughs> how modern cars they're so wired up with connectivity that they're you know they're tracking all your user data and then yeah. in yeah. some in some cases selling that to your insurance company and then increasing your rates based on your driving behavior. So it's like, man, I mean that alone makes kind of makes me nervous about wanting to get into a brand new car. Yeah, yeah. You know, one thing too that's really changed is that. You know, when I was growing up, if you drove a 20-year-old car, it was old, man. Right. <laughs> I mean, right. Like, if you grew up in the 80s, you know, you're talking like a 50s car. You know, <laughs> yes. that, that, that's quite a jump back or early 60s, you know. And now, you know, a 20-year-old vehicle is 2000s. Yep. You know, that's, yeah. that's still, a, you, people still drive those all the time. Yeah. You know. I mean, well, the difference is like you just said, I mean, the, the, the amount of time is the same, but the technology is so different. Yeah. Like the, the amount of technology improved from like the fifties to the seventies is huge, but now, yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, they're adding nice features, convenience features, like, you know, better radar cruise control and auto dimming headlights and that stuff's cool. But yeah, you know, they, a lot of automakers kind of solved the big reliability problems like 10, 20 years ago. Yeah, you get like an 05 Honda, and it's going to be probably pretty solid right now if it's been maintained. Oh, and, yeah, you'll uh, get 300,000 miles out of that thing. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, shoot, I had a, a Toyota Tundra model year 2000, and that had 340,000 miles on it when I sold it. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. the thing is, you blow the motor up, you put another engine in for three, four thousand right. dollars and off you go again. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And safety stuff too. Like, you know, um, those fifties cars, you know, we're not super safe, but I mean, a mid two thousands, uh, is car is, is not necessarily that bad. So it's yeah. like, yeah, your older stuff, I guess another way to put it is yeah. Older cars don't seem as old today as they used to. No, they don't. <laughs> the styling hasn't changed that much, you know? And another thing that I see, uh, old timer hot rodders kind of hate this but they just have to get over it because, you know, like they hate the Fast and the Furious stuff. Oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, those Fast and Furious guys. Well, the first Fast and Furious movie came out 20 years ago. That's right. Yeah. And how many have they done now? Like 10 of them? I think so, yeah. <laughs> and so there's a whole, there's like two or three generations in there now that grew up with those kind of movies. So there is going to be a lot of interest in the cars that are in those movies. And yeah. I already see yeah. it. Not only as oh, collector's yeah. items, but... 
as just, you know, people want to drive those. That's what they grew up driving. Yeah. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Those, uh, those sport compacts from yeah the late nineties and the early two thousands, they definitely, I, a lot of them are collector's items now. And, yeah. um, you know, so many of those, the ones that were cool, especially like the Civic SIs and the Integra GSRs, so many of them were either heavily modified or wrecked or both that the yeah. ones that are left are pretty precious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you like cars, if you like coffee, you're going to love Gears Coffee Cars because in each pack, you'll find a special blend of rich, robust coffee to get your blood pumping, as well as a collectible cartoon sticker and matching photo card of some of the wildest vehicles Stacy has built or featured over the years collect the whole series and be sure to keep an eye out for the ultra rare strange brew card that are added to random packages to keep things interesting it's gears coffee cards the best bean on the car scene let me get into this now okay as a modifier yourself Mm -hmm. and now we're talking about some of the newer vehicles obviously we've seen a lot of changes there's a lot of things you can't do to these newer vehicles that, you know, we're used to doing. What do you think as far as modifications that are going to be acceptable and easy to do to some of these newer vehicles? For example, you know, when I first started getting into cars, there was like several ingredients you had to put in. And you had to put hooker headers on it. You had to put (laughs) glass pack mufflers on it, cherry bombs preferably, Krager wheels, and a Grant steering wheel. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and then of course a crane cam and you know, Holly carburetor and all that other yep. kind of stuff. And then as things went along, like in the two thousands, it was a programmer and yep. a K and N air filter, you know, some sort of exhaust magna flow or whatever. So now with the, the changes in the computer stuff, what do you think will be the main modifications that people can do on these newer vehicles coming out? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, uh, wheels and tires, I think, will still always be yeah. a good good mod. Um, you know, if you're willing to spend the money, you'll be able to get nice lightweight wheels and really good tires. Do you like the blacked out wheels? Or are you tired of it? Uh, I'm not big on black wheels, personally. Yeah. I'm about yeah, ready for that to go away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like uh, I've seen some funky colors. Sometimes gold wheels can be fun. Yeah. Um, but, but I typically like silvers and uh, yeah. sometimes white if, if it's the right car. Sure. Um, but yeah, black wheels, yeah, not, they always look dirty to me. <laughs> yeah. And it's like clean those. Well, either that or it looks like a government vehicle. Right. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I do have some uh, black steel wheels for the winter time on some cars. But oh, yeah, yeah t- typically, yes. Yeah, like, um but yeah so besides wheels and tires you know i mean you will you can still get like exhaust and intakes exhaust yes exhaust air intake are both still solid yeah yeah, it's still a thing but it's uh you know the gains are more incremental now just because the factories are getting so good at optimizing these things and you know of course you also got to think like a, a lot of the aftermarket stuff is just not necessarily made as well as some of the modern factory stuff. I mean, some of it is, but yeah. you really got to be, got to be careful when you pick your parts. <laughs> no, I'm so glad you said that because there's a lot of people, as you, as you know, you go to SEMA and yeah. you see the people that come out, you know, mostly American made companies that spend a lot of time building their stuff. And the reason I say that is because generally the owners and the people behind those companies are true American hot rodders. So they're trying to build the best products they possibly can because they want to go out and win the races. Right. Well, when you have a company come in from China or something else and rip them off, well, they're just about the profit margin. They don't care about the engineering in it. So the castings are thinner and the quality is worse and because they don't care. Now they may look the same, but they're not the same. But unfortunately, a guy, you know, that's on a budget, you're like, well, you know, this one's $300 and this one's 150 you know, so which one are you right. going to do? <laughs> you know, yeah. that's a, that's no, a you, pretty simple equation for somebody who doesn't have any money. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I mean, and sometimes lower quality brands can, you know, kind of flood Amazon and flood yeah, the market yeah. where it's, it's actually harder to find the good stuff, yeah. um, even if you are willing to pay for it. So it is, it definitely behooves you to dig deep and... Do your research and yeah, make sure you're, it is because it is worth buying the good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've, I've, I've made that mistake before. You know, what do they say, right? Like buy once, cry once, right? Like buy the good stuff first. And yeah. Then, uh, you don't have to cry when you replace it again. <laughs> yeah. We're actually getting ready to uh, dig into the, I don't know if you remember the truck. I did the little red wagon, which was a, oh, yeah. 
Yeah. That that Dodge, that ninety nine Dodge short bed regular. Oh yeah, cab. absolutely. Four yeah, yeah. Four. Well, I've still got that. And um, nice. I'm rolling it back in, and the thing has 200,000, 300,000 miles on it, been through numerous engines, this and that. <laughs> but I still have that old Skyjacker lift I put on there. Nice. It has over 100,000 miles on it, been through all kinds of weather, you know, and it's 18, probably an 18-year-old lift. Wow. And so even now, I'm getting ready to upgrade it with a new one. And really, the only reason I'm changing it is because the powder coating is all nasty, you know, because it's been in uh, snow and uh, yeah. sand and all that salt kind of stuff. <laughs> but when you look at that, it's like that's an aftermarket part. They got, you know, 20 years worth of use out of it, over 100,000 miles of hard use. That's awesome. You know, and that that speaks a lot because I can't say that for some of the other aftermarket parts that yeah, I have definitely. on. No, that's great. Yeah, that's really impressive. So, yeah, going in, to your point, it's really – it's important to get the good stuff and, and do your it research is. on it. It is. And then the last thing I'll, I'll toss out as like a modern car modification is that computer tuning is definitely still a big thing, you know, because a, a, a lot of car, not all of new cars are turbocharged also, which kind of unlocks a higher threshold for, or higher uh, kind of return on investment for tuning. Um, yeah. You know, I have, a, I have a tune on my, on a Honda Civic and it improved the drivability a lot, but it didn't add a ton of power because there wasn't yeah. really much headroom. But uh, you do that with a turbocharged car, and you can you can definitely you can definitely get a, get more juice out of it. Oh yeah, so that's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. So, have you been doing some test driving of some new stuff? Yes. So, uh, what has yeah. stood out to you? Oh, let's see. Uh, so, I was just in Utah okay. driving the driving the new Ford Ranger Raptor. Okay, and man, what a machine that is! Okay, I, uh, what engine is in it? <laughs> so that's got a three liter V six EcoBoost okay. uh, Turbo V six. Yeah, okay. not a not an eight, but it's um, I think it's about four hundred horsepower. It's not like the kind of acceleration that really blows you back into the seat, but it's sufficient. Mm -hmm. But where that where that vehicle really excels is it's able to kind of hold the power when you're coming on and off throttle in the sand and when you're kind of fooling around mm -hmm. the, uh, the like traction management system in that thing is so impressive. And, uh, just, just the way, you know, we're talking, we were just talking about the downside of computerization, but this is a big upside mm -hmm. <laughs> where everything between like power and like suspension settings can all be done, uh, in a computerized way where they're all, all the systems are talking to each other. You can really build a heck of a truck as I think Ford has done with that thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, the, the 2024 Ranger, the base one I was kind of lukewarm about, but the Raptor is pretty dramatically different. It's definitely a unique vehicle. Um, where did you drive yeah. it at? Did you get a ticket uh, off road? Yes. Yeah. We Ford actually has a, uh, has an off-road training school outside of Salt Lake. Um, yes. <laughs> I've and, been uh, there. <laughs> yeah. So how do you, excellent. Yeah. So if you buy a new, uh, if you buy one of these vehicles, they will, they'll bring you out there. That's part of that comes with the package. And I, I strongly encourage anybody who, who has the opportunity to check it out because it's uh it's a great learning experience, but it's, and it's also a great way to appreciate the capability of these machines. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, a truck like that just really shines in that like kind of Baja style soft stuff where you where you can kind of hang the back out a little bit. Um, and the exhaust note is great, too, which is another thing that a lot of V6s are not great with is yes, sound. But they've stepped man, up on that. Yeah, that thing really sounds awesome. And uh, yeah. it's actually got a controllable exhaust system. So you can you can put it in a quiet mode for when you're coming home late. Uh and you don't want to bother the neighbors or you can, you can basically open it up and uh, some baffles open up and it gets quite, quite nice to hear, Yeah, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. Okay. Um, but what's the price of them? Uh, you know, they start about 55, really? I think, which is, oh my yeah, gosh, it's it, cheaper than I thought. It, yeah. It's, I mean, it's a lot of money objectively, but I think for what you're getting with Ranger Raptor, you're getting a pretty solid vehicle. Um, and does that yeah, still have really, the King shocks yeah. and everything, or is it? Uh, that one has a has a Fox like has a, a Fox live shock. valve. Okay. Yeah, it has a Fox setup. Um, and uh, yeah, really, really nice suspension. Uh, just, just a super, super all around impressive vehicle. Um, tons of fun. I tell you what, uh, talking about the Raptor when they when they changed that body style and came out with that the newer version, I think it was like mm. seven, seventeen or eighteen, something like that. Yeah. Uh, they called me out there. They brought me out uh, to one of the junkets out there where uh -huh. they took us out to this training ground and it was all for just the press and everything. Matter of fact, yep. Alan was out there with me 
Mm-hmm. And um, so they loaded us up in these Raptors, and I got with the the designer guy. Of course, it, you've been to those junkets before where they yeah, have all the suit times. guys walking around, and they're <laughs> yeah. and they're just expounding all of these, you know, technical things, and and they don't know they're just recorders, you know, right? Saying it. It's kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, I got with the engineers back there, and I got with one of the guys, and he says, "I want to ride with you." And he says, I want to take you out in a special place, he says, because you're the one I want to talk with. Nice. So I was very flattered about that. But I said, well, why? He said, because I want to know what we could do better in the aftermarket on this. Huh. And okay. He said, you're an expert in the aftermarket. And he says, I want to see how we did compared to the aftermarket. I said, well, let's rock. So okay. So I got in the truck, you know, and I had heard a lot about the Raptor. I hadn't been in one before. And so we went out and we started messing around. And then he was like, I mean, we're all helmeted up and everything. He says, all right, just, he says, go in this thing. So I'm going out across the desert. I'm doing about a buck 20, you know, and I got two fingers on the wheel, you know, and I'm just testing this thing out. And I mean, I put this thing all kinds of every which direction, but sideways. I was blown away by what this truck was capable of. Mm-hmm. And it, to the point of where I said, what are you going to do with these vehicles? Like this vehicle I'm driving right now. He said, well, they're all pre-production. They're test vehicles. They'll all be crushed. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I want this one. I, I said, you know, <laughs> what is it going to take for me to buy this? How can I get one of these? Of course, I never was able to get it. But <laughs> I was so impressed. And the only thing I told him as we were driving back, he said, so what would you do or is there anything in the aftermarket? I said, well, I'm familiar with the, you know, Ram was just coming out with the TRX. Mm-hmm. And there was all this other stuff. I said, honestly, the millions of dollars you have spent engineering this suspension. I said, there's nothing in the aftermarket that I can mm-hmm. put together that will compete with this unless I get a wrecked Raptor and, right. put the, and put your suspension in there. And I was being very honest with him. I said, the only problem I got with the truck, I said, it sounds like garbage. That's <laughs> the, exactly what I said. I said, the yes. exhaust sounds like a UPS truck. And, and he was like, well, that it's is, not that bad. Yeah, said, that is yeah. exactly what I said, yep. <laughs> but evidently, from what you said, they've changed it. So I'll need to go try one of those out. Yes, yeah. Um, the, the new Ranger, The new. I was surprised because I was listening for that too. I mean, when the when the original Raptor was out with a 6.2 V8, I mean, that thing sounded sweet. Especially yeah. you throw like a Borla or Magnaflow on that thing and it was like, like, I mean, that would sound absolutely fierce. And then, yeah, when that when the V6 turbo came out, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know about this. It doesn't set, it doesn't have that presence. Yeah, and it that, was uh, a great yeah. engine. I mean, the thing had a lot of it power. Was. And oh, it, yeah. I exactly. didn't have any problems with the power and the suspension and the, the traction control and all the controls you had. It's just the sound. Yeah, Which is totally. a huge thing, you know. Absolutely. Especially in a toy car like that, where oh, you, yeah. you know, I mean, that's not it's not meant for going to get groceries. That's that's yeah. uh, out there to party. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I have arrived. Noise. Please notice, I have exactly. Arrived. So yeah, that's so cool. The, well, what color was yeah. the one that you were driving? Uh, we drove a red one, which was nice. I think Ford trucks look best in blue, personally. That's yeah, that lighter my, blue. Yeah, exactly. That's what they the one. Oh, nice oh that's the one I was driving. Yeah, I still hate the <laughs> fact I couldn't get hold of that. Of course, I ragged on that pretty hard. <laughs> and so did everybody else, but right. <laughs> yeah, and the Ranger is it's a little bit smaller than the current F one fifty, so it was like mm-hmm. it felt it just felt more natural, kind of getting flicked around the dirt. And uh, so I think I think they got a real hit on their hands with that thing. I do too, especially if they can keep it in around fifty grand. Yeah, I know, I know we're talking a pickup truck for fifty grand. You know, ten fifteen years ago, people would have laughed us right off the air. Exactly. But now yeah. that's cheap. It is, yeah. yeah. I mean, even the base one is like high 30s or 40-something. Okay, one last thing. What do you think about hydrogen? Sure. Have you seen what Mike Copeland is doing with the hydrogen trucks and stuff out there? With like big rig stuff or with well, uh, he, passenger trucks? He had a big monster truck out there this year, but last year he had a like a a 50s Ford pickup that he was racing in the Optima series, and it was no hydrogen-powered. Oh, he's so far oh, ahead wow. of everybody else. <laughs> And I like the idea of hydrogen for sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, a combustible liquid that only pollutes like water droplets. I mean, it yeah. sounds amazing. <laughs> well, the thing is, you can take your existing engine and convert it. Right. So you've, okay. got, you've got the sound, you've got all the stuff, and you're getting the true power out of it instead of trying to take a battery and put it somewhere in extra yeah. weight and the whole thing. Right. And it's, so you don't lose the sound, you don't lose anything. I guess the, the challenge is just getting it, right? Like, where do you gas up? It's that's kind of like, <laughs> well, they're working on that, but it seems like that's a real viable option. 
there is a place for electric vehicles. Obviously, we've sure. been using electric buses downtown and yeah. things like that for a long time. And, you know, a delivery thing or an Uber driver, you know, a Domino's pizza delivery guy running, you know, short things around town, you know, electric might make sense for them. I mean, even as, even as a short range get around car, I mean, it's totally, yeah. if, if you got to plug at home and you can just kind of ride in silence to work, it's nice. And yeah. Um, yeah, they're nice and smooth. They're quiet. I've driven a lot of electric cars that I do like, but yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely not my pick for like a, a enthusiast car for sure. <laughs> Everything's wrong about them to me. Yeah, I get it. I'm I just, get it. <laughs> I'm just a hot rod guy. Yeah. I but I do like sure. the technology and that's one of the things we always, you know, ever since I was doing trucks, that was always the thing. It's like any sort of real technology, we always want to cover it. You know, mm. so we were when turbos first were getting hot, you know, we we're pushing on those the pros and the cons because there are pros yeah. and cons to everything. Sure. Superchargers, the same thing. Yeah. Airbag suspensions, same thing. Yeah, you can't. Uh, nothing's free, right? Everything costs something else. Everything so costs. Compromises. Yeah. Yeah. I remember an old mechanic <laughs> that I was working for when I was a kid. And I was like, you know, I was coming in. I was like, oh, I want to go so fast. And I want to do this. <laughs> I want to do all that. Yep. And he, he starts saying this saying that I kept hearing. He goes, you know, the nicer the nice, the higher the price. That's right. That's you know? exactly right. <laughs> and it's the same thing, you know, whether it looks good or whether you want to go faster. Yeah. You know, and those numbers jump exponentially. And it's funny Absolutely. now. I, I see a lot of guys, like I was talking to a guy just recently that was wanting to build a Cobra a kit car. Oh, you cool. know. Uh, like a, a factory five or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, I'm going to build mine. It's going to go 200 miles an hour. And I'm like, well, you know, you can do that. Yeah. It is possible, but you do realize that you take like needs like double the horsepower to go from 180 <laughs> to 200 than it took to get right. to 180. Right. And he's like, well, I, I just, that doesn't make sense. The math doesn't work. It's like, oh yeah, it does. You're just looking at the yeah. wrong, the wrong <laughs> equation. You know, you're talking yeah. about a lot of force going through the air and the thing's shaped like a brick. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, ultimately you end up, if you really want to get the absolute max gains, it, it ends up being a lot of money for kind of an incremental improvement ultimately. Oh yeah. I mean, I just put a set of uh, like pretty aggressive motor mounts in a car and I, uh, I got the, the light duty ones and even still I fired it up and I was like, whoa. Okay, this is a lot more vibrating than I expected. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you read about that, but actually putting it into practice is like, okay, yep, I see. I see why the factory did not do it this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I got one last question for you. Sure. And this, this is just you. Okay, so okay. if you could have any vehicle, mm. you know, that, as a toy vehicle, not as a daily driver, just that. Okay. You know, if you wanted to just jump out and you just wanted to drive this thing, whether it's a truck yeah. or car, whatever, what would it be? Oh man! Oh, God. And I mean, so many it, good ones. it doesn't just have to be a muscle car, a supercar. You know that that vehicle is just like that one vehicle. You know, is it the bullet Mustang? Is it a '50s Porsche? Is it a you know what is it? Yeah, you know, you know what I always come back to is uh, the BMW 2002 from the late '60s, early '70s. Oh my uh, gosh! Yes, I, yeah. yeah. A friend of mine had one of those. Oh really? Oh yeah. <laughs> nice. It's, uh, you know, not, not a particularly exceptional performer by today's standards, especially in stock form, but the shape of that car, just like, to me, it's like, it's like the car I drew as a kid, like yeah. little round headlights, little round taillights, little boxy, kind of boxy body. Yeah. yeah. But with like the, the, there were just a lot of cool little details and it was just such a friendly and complete like little shape. And, uh, yeah, I, I, of course, you know, now they're either totally rusted out or a million dollars. So they're, yeah. they're, I don't know if, I think I might've missed my opportunity to buy one, but uh, I just love the design of that thing. And I've gotten to drive a few and they are fun. They are fun. So, they're yeah, great cars. Yeah, That's a great choice. Absolutely. So that would be mine. Yeah. <laughs> that is surprising. That's why I like to ask that. You just never know what somebody's yeah, going to cool. say, you know, <laughs> that is awesome. Absolutely. Well, listen, Andrew, it's been a, it's been a pleasure having you on here, man. We'll have you back on. Yeah, well, like I said, man, it was a real thrill talking to you. It's it's so cool that you're like coming out of my TV from from back in the day, man. I love it. <laughs> oh man, that's that's awesome. All right, that's our show for today, which means you need to get out there and start working on something. Spend some time turning wrenches. You might be surprised how much you like it. Make sure you check out our website, stacydavid.com, because we've got all kinds of new products and some other great stuff that you're just gonna love. Also, make sure to check out our social media. That's Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, all at Official Stacy David. 
Our social media is where you're going to find all of the bonus content, the giveaways, the contests, the trivia. We even have extra viewer projects that focus on what you are working on. Also, the new season of Gears will be on MAV TV, and YouTube will be the place that you can view all of your favorite Gears episodes, as well as the full project builds that follow the project from beginning to end. Make sure to check out our new Gears coffee cars. This is a unique blend of coffee and cool stickers to collect that will appeal to anyone. All right, that's all the announcements. We're all up to date. We'll see you next time.